Welcome to today's 3D print. I've got some goodies for you. I printed another nose cone, and as usual, the Ender 2 did an absolutely perfect job. I'll be making a whole bunch of these. Then on the Duplicator i3, I had a time lapse, but somebody turned the camera, bumped it, so I don't have the time lapse anymore. But, um, the Apollo astronaut. Yeah, I finally got one of these printed, and the the Duplicator 3 did a really amazing job on it. I mean, it's really nice. This got a little goofy. In the back here, it's not perfect. Which is a pity, because you're going to see that a lot. He prints like this. There's manual supports that are added to him, and he prints just like this with manual supports. Although, it comes with the supports built in. But the details are impressive. He came out really nice. So, I'm going to make another one of him on the Ender. We'll see how he comes out on the Ender, too. Um, I had to shrink him down a little bit to print him on the Duplicator i3, because it's right at the max height. A little over the max height, actually. I got the, um, the ANET E10 going again, so I the connections. Um, also, somebody, I don't remember who you were, but thank you, gave me the advice to um, loosen the grub screw for the, the nozzle and push it up a little bit, which would give me that little extra play I needed to account for my very thick print bed that I use. And I just spit out another perfect Marvin. Come on. You know you want to focus. There it goes. As usual. A very nice Marvin. That's always that's my standard go-to test print because it's fast. And I just put a big skirt around them so that I can level the bed. Now on the Ender 2, I also did the Starship Voyager in two pieces, and it came out spectacular. Look at all the details on the hull of that model, even the little windows, even the little shuttlecraft right there. Everything came out absolutely beautiful. I mean, wow! <laughs> I'm really impressed. I think that hole was supposed to be for you to stick a peg to mount it. and. Um, yeah, look at that. The nacelles came out nice. Everything. This part printed like this. So the nacelles were just touching the bed. This way I only needed support right here. That was it. That's all I needed support for it. Print it without support. This is also hollow for perimeters. Um, this printed just like this, sitting on a bed. And I added infill. It's all hollow except for this little section of the hole right here. Actually, you can probably see it. Yeah, see it right there? See the shadow? That's 25% infill just because I knew the um, deflector dish would not print correctly without some infill to support it because it was a curve going back the other way at a pretty extreme angle. So it would have printed, but it would have been garbage. The infill main so it came out really nice. I'm going to print a mega version of this on the CR10. Same exact split, but as big as I can get it on the CR10. So that'll be pretty cool. I'm going to wait a week to do that because I have some special filament coming in and I got some Pantone Gray the lightest gray I could find because the ship is actually supposed to be gray not white so I'll have that in a more correct color I got a crap ton of light in here but I'm still looking dark in the picture hmm. might just be my screen and then for this week's mega print oh yeah uh, that's 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 a pretty beefy print considering it's on my two hundred dollar ender 2 I don't know what that is but it's over twelve inches long that's pretty cool so, you guys remember this guy? The little kitty cat? The decapa cat? Well, I decided to print the revenge of the cat! The whole cat! It is a cookie jar. I have a ginormous revenge of the decapa cat cookie jar. Someone found the STL file, I got it off the Facebook group forums, and I printed out a gigantic version of the cat. And I intentionally split him where he failed on the other one, because number one, I couldn't make him this big on the CR-10, but I wanted to, this is 30 bucks worth of filament. I don't want to blow 30 bucks worth of filament and not do something with it. So this is a legit cookie jar. 
I can put whatever I want in here. It's all hollow inside there. Just like the original. Can you get light in there? Actually, I got a flashlight. Where's the flashlight? Uh, there it is. There you go. And you can see in there. He's all hollow in there. Looks really cool with all the geometric facets. They actually made it hollow. This wasn't hollowed by my slicer. It was hollowed by whoever made this STL file. So you could fit an awful lot of cookies in that cat. How tall is he? He's big. He is. That's 300. That is 445 millimeters tall. So 44 and a half centimeters tall from my big gigantic Revenge of the Cat. <laughs> I thought you guys would get a kick out of that. The print quality is amazing, as usual. I mean, it is very clean. I have zero complaints. Little zits, of course, but on a model this big, you barely notice the zits. They don't really become a problem when you make something this large. I'm still working on tuning out the zits. I haven't had time to run test prints. This is so biter. file scales up very nicely. I just took a failed print and glued three tabs in there and that's how the lid stays on. Um, because of its size there's not even a whole lot of ringing. You can see it's very nice, very flat. My Z problems are gone. Whatever little glitch I had in there, it's not doing it anymore. So I'm leaving it alone. <laughs> there's zero issues. It's beautiful. When I slide the carriage up and down. I don't get that dit, dit, dit anymore. It's nice and smooth now. So I, I think I loosened it up enough. I think I was just over tightened. Got one glitch here. This line is off a little bit for some reason. I'm not sure why. No idea. It's minor. It's irrelevant. It doesn't affect the structural integrity. It's just cosmetic. This is Zyro Broads. Very cool filibit. The Voyager was printed in eSun PLA Pro Warm White. The nose cone is one of my favorite filaments. It's Zyro's fluorescent orange. It's even brighter than my shirts. I, I love this orange. It's beautiful. It's got like a, it's got that um, that sheen that the um, that um, Exelvon filament that I really like. The orange Exelvon filament. It has that. Um, kind of metallic shiny sheen to the plastic. Uh, it looks like there's like a metallic layer in it or something like that. It's it's nice. It's a good it's good plastic. Nice and strong, no creaking. And then um, of course the astronaut is printed in I uh, this Hacka. I don't even know. It's that cheap thirteen dollar filament. Oh Sinoc. This is Sinoc um, filament. Uh, it's 1328 to, I think 1328 for the black and 1380 for the white but um, yeah nice filament it printed out real nice the details are good for $13 a kilo of filament I ain't complaining <laughs> you can't beat that this is only $17 a kilo $16.99 a kilo I believe and the um, Esan is something like $22, $23 a kilo sometimes you can get it for a little cheaper but I love my cat he took um, over 80 hours of printing. I believe it was, I want to say 60, 65 hours for the body. And then it was um, another 40, 45 hours for the head. He just finished last night. I oh, know, I'm sorry, earlier today. Yeah, that when I woke up this morning, he was up to here. And by like 2 or 3 in the afternoon, the ear got done. So like 40 hours to do the head. So you're looking at. Uh, maybe it wasn't 60, maybe it was 50. So it was, it was already about 80 hours, 80, 85 hours to do both parts. And they line up great. They look great. I'd love to know what this says. I have no idea what these say. <laughs> so if anybody knows what these things say, let me know. Um, you probably already have the file, but just so you can get a close up. There's the little pamphlet he's holding. There's the charm on his neck. There we go. And here's his belly stone there. Anybody knows what they're saying? Let me know. I'm curious. So, 
couple other things. Um, got this really nice soldering kit. I couldn't find my stinking soldering iron with like Scrooge put another one. Um, it was 17 bucks on Amazon. It comes in a nice case with a strap you can hang it up. I really like this. It's a cheap one. It's a cheap 60 watt soldering iron, but it comes with basic instructions. Um, comes with a basic stand, the soldering iron, 60 watt adjustable temperature. Very cool. Solder sucker, solder tips. So you can do melting, cutting, tweezers, cutters, a little extra wire. Nice little kit. I was really impressed by that. Wish it was all orange, but that's okay. And then um, also got some Bowden tubes, so I can replace the Bowden tubes on the printer since they're all using the wrong size Bowden tube. So this will take out a little bit more of my retraction ringing. Although I'm not having problems, this will make them even better. Uh, having the right size tubes, but yeah. That is cool. If anybody with a CR10 would like the um, G code to print this to make it come out like this. Uh, let me know and I'll post it. Um, actually, maybe I'll just post it to the Facebook group. I, I could probably do that. I'm assuming I can. But as you can see, it prints out fantastically. So if you have a CR10 and you want to make yourself a Revenge of the Cat cookie jar, there you go. You can have yourself a Revenge of the Cat cookie jar with G code already optimized for the CR10 and go from there. To the way I did this, I put this in Simplify 3D. I figured out where this layer was and simply told it to stop printing at that layer. That became one G code file. And then I dropped the cat into the bed that many millimeters. You know, whatever I told it to stop printing at, I did a negative offset to drop him into the bed so only his head was sitting on the bed. And I made that a second G code. That's it. He was already hollowed out, so I knew that would already be done. And I just put three glue tabs just pieces of plastic on three different spots. I should probably put one more right here. I probably will. Having a fourth one right there probably center it better, but it works fine. You know, his, his head pops on, and I have my gigantic cat cookie jar. I <laughs> uh, hope you guys enjoy it. I don't think I have any other prints handy. Nothing that I've done. You know, I did some parts in the fluorescent, you know, my motor mount retainer, my 5mm centering ring and my 15mm centering ring for my rocket. Just because I like orange. So I do all my parts in orange. Um, I started a nose cone in the red and then I cancelled it when I realized I can make this nice bevel in the nose cone to make it easier to insert. So instead of wasting the plastic, I cancelled it and I realized it's a good little parts tray. That's a really good little parts tray. That's just the beginning of the nose cone to start doing some infill. It's great for you know, if you're working with stuff and you need a little parts tray to put stuff in, it's pretty cool. So, I'll hang on to that. It looks pretty. And that's it. So, here's the original cat. There we go. There's the original cat. <laughs> the original cat is about the size of his ear. <laughs> so that's a, that's a hell of a difference. What is that size difference? 445 from... 70 millimeters to 445 millimeters, 28, 32, 39, what's that, almost 600%, yeah about 600%, so that's about a 600% scale kitty cat, that comes with the SD card, yeah, you guys have a great night.